Hi everyone! In this episode, we'll try to create simple biomes by stacking multiple grades in texture based on the latitude and then mixing these biomes together with yet another noise texture. Now, let's start by creating a new script again, and it's going to be a new resource that we are going to call Planet Biome. Now, in our Planet Biome resource, we're going to be adding a few export as usual. The first one is going to be our old gradient texture that this time we're going to keep inside this resource. We'll also add a start height, which is going to be the latitude where we want to use this gradient texture. Now, we'll copy the usual stuff for being able to see our things in the editor and of course we have to add the tool keyword and now we can go into our planet data and instead of having directly the gradient texture we're going to get rid of this and we're going to replace it with a new array of resource but this time it's going to be a list of biomes Once again, when we are setting our planet noise, we want to register to any change event and bubble them up. And I can see here that I haven't named my planet biome resource, so we're going to go back and make sure I've named that planet biome. And now in the planet data, the errors should go away. Of course, now we don't have a planet color, so we can get rid of that. Now the question is, how are we going to use this? Because now we have several grades in texture. In the planet mesh face, we can't just pass in the grades in texture like we used to do. We're going to have to merge those texture together somehow. So that's why in planet data, we're going to add a new method that we are going to call update biome texture. And this is going to return an image texture. Now this image texture, we're going to declare it at the beginning here, is going to contain all the grades in texture together. As you remember, the grades in texture always only is one pixel high. So we can create a dynamic texture, dynamic texture, that is going to be the width of our gradient. So that means that all our gradients have to have the same width and they're going to have the height of the number of biomes we have in our planet. So for this, we have to calculate the height, which is going to be the number of biome we have. And as long as we have more than one biome, we can get the data. So the data for a texture is an array of byte that we store in a pool byte array and we can calculate the width, like I said, based on the first biome in our list. And now we can iterate over all our biomes and add the data from the grades and texture into our pool byte array. And once we have this, we can create our image from the data we have. And it's going to be the width and the height we calculated. And it's going to be in the format RGBA8. And we're going to pass our data. Now we can create our texture from the image we created and it's going to be a dynamic image and the 4 here is a flag that we're passing to Godot to tell it that we don't want any MIP map and we want to use filtering. So if you're curious you can have a look at this enumeration here of the flags. So by default we'd get MIP map, repeat and filter 
but in our case the only thing we are interested in is the filter. We definitely don't want to create mitmap for our gradient texture, so I'm passing only the for value. And now that our texture is created, we can even give it a name. And we can return our image texture. Now to use this image texture, we can go back into our planet mesh face and where we were setting the height color to the gradient in the planet data, now we can do planet data dot update biome texture. And this is going to return our new texture that's composed of all the grades in, in our planet. Now, there's still a problem because if you remember, in our material, we're just getting the height as the x coordinate inside our texture, but the y coordinate is always zero, so that's always going to be the very first gradient in our texture. How are we going to figure out which gradient we should be using? Well, for this, we have to go back into our planet data again, and we're going to create yet another method that will return to us the index inside our texture of the right gradient to use for any given point in our planet. So we're going to call this biome percent from point, and we're going to pass a point on unit sphere. It's going to be a vector three, and it's going to return a float. That's going to be the x coordinate of our texture. And to do this, well, the first part is pretty easy because we just need to calculate our current height as a percentage. And since we're passing the point on the unit sphere that's between minus one and one, all we really need to do is take the point on unit sphere, add one, and divide by two, which is going to give us something between zero and one, and that's going to be our latitude. Then we can get our biome index that's going to be initialized at zero and we can have the number of biome that's going to be biomes that size and then for each biome in our number of biome we are going to check if the biome that start height is smaller than the height percent we just calculated, then we're going to set the biome index to this value. Otherwise, the next biome is above the one we want to use, so we can just break and return the biome index. But of course, this is going to be a value between zero and the number of biome we have. We want a value between zero and one for our texture, so we're going to divide our, our number of biome. But for example, if we had two biome, then the second biome would be index one out of a number of two biomes. So one divided by two would be 0 0.5, but ideally we want to return one. So we can do minus one here. But then if we have only one biome, num of biome one minus one will be zero, which would be a division by zero. So we're just going to cap this value like such. And I shouldn't have forgotten, what we care about is the latitude, so all we want is the y component, which is going to be the up and down vector. So now that we are returning this value, which is going to be the y coordinate in our texture, well, we need to pass it somehow to our shader. So if we go back to the planet mesh face, we have here a UV array that we are not using because we were calculating the UV automatically based on the height, but now we can use this to pass the y coordinate inside our gradient texture. So once we've calculated our point on unit sphere, we can get our biome index by doing a planet data that a biome percent from point and pass it our point on unit sphere. Now I'm using the point on unit sphere and not the point on planet or the point on the unit cube because I'm interested in the actual latitude normalized between minus one and one. So I don't want the latitude 
modified by whatever scale or radius we set our planet to. Now that we have our biome index, we can set it inside our UV array exactly the same way we set our vertex array, but this is a vector 2 and the x we are going to calculate so it doesn't really matter but the y is going to be our biome index. So now that we're passing this value inside our shader we can go into our shader here and where we were using 0 as the y index we can now use the uv.y and of course now our planet is just black because we haven't set any biome yet but if we open this here and we go into our new biome settings and we add a new biome and of course we set the gradient texture and we add a new gradient well we should be able to set something like a red here and a blue here and of course we have to fix our typo so it's not get date it's get data And if we fix our typo, everything should be working fine. So now if we want to have more than one biome and we can create a new gradient texture and we can set on our first gradient texture, for example, pure red. And on our second gradient texture, we can set, for example, pure black. And if we raise our start height, we should see both texture being applied to our planet and we can add yet another one and set a new gradient texture and remember we have to make sure that the width matches between all of those and if we set a new color for example white and we play around with the start height when when we reach 0 0.5 for example and we can reduce a little bit this one maybe then we have some kind of weird three color planet some kind of candy maybe of course the transition is very harsh and it's very linear so one way we can fix that is by adding yet another texture so what we're going to do is in our data here add a new noise texture We're going to call it biome noise and it's going to be another simplex noise. But this time we're going to need a few more properties also to control how much of the noise is going to affect our biome. So we're going to add a biome amplitude. And we're going to add a biome offset. And now we can go into our uh, biome percent from point. And basically what we're going to do is just change the height percent based on our noise texture. So it's going to be very simple. We just do height percent plus equal. And just like before, our biome noise, we're going to use get noise 3dv to get it based on the point on unit sphere. But again, because I want this to be a bit easier to set the period, I'm going to multiply by 100. And I'm going to make sure I get a value between 0 and 1 by doing this plus 1 divided by 2. But since I want to control how much of this is going to affect the biome blending, I'm going to remove a biome offset and multiply by the biome amplitude. Now with just this, if we go back in our 3D view, and now we can set a new open simplex noise we can set some amplitude like this, for example. And as you can see, it kind of offsets everything. So that's why we have the offset to bring it back a little bit. And as we play with the period, you're going to see that we can start adding noise 
into our merging of biomes, which makes it look already a little bit better, but it's still really harsh. And even if we increase the resolution, it, it's still going to be a very, very well-defined transition between the biomes, which is still maybe not quite what we would like. So the solution for this is going to add some kind of blending between the two biome. And we can do that because of the way we set up our texture. Because our grids and texture are stacked on top of each other, the shader is already going to interpolate between the pixels if we haven't set it exactly at the value of the pixel itself. What does that mean? It means we can do a new property in our planet data that we're going to call biome blend and we are going to set it so that it can only go from 0 to 1 and this value we're going to use into our biome percent again. Now to use this value we're going to have to get rid of this and do something a little bit more fancy. This is a trick using the way shaders interpolate between values because if the Y coordinate of our gradient texture isn't perfectly on the pixel, the shader will automatically blend the colors for us. So all we have to do is find the distance from our biome start and then linearly interpolate between the minus blend range and positive blend range. So the way we're going to do that is get the distance here and then we can linearly interpolate between the minus blend range and the blend range based on our distance. And then we clamp those values. And the blend range, we're actually going to divide it by two so that our blend range is both in the positive and negative. And Sebastian Lag does a really great job at explaining all the minutia of all the details of this algorithm. But I suggest you go watch his tutorial if you want to really understand how this is all working, because I think he does an excellent job of explaining that. But in our case, all we have to do is multiply by one minus the weight, and then also add I times the weight. And with this, now we should be able to go back in our 3D view. And if we go to our biome blend, if we start adding biome blend, you can see that things are starting to blend together. And maybe we can give ourselves a little bit more black by just going and reducing the start height. But as you can see, now it's become quite blurry and we have a very nice blend between our biome. Of course, the colors are still very much clashing with each other, but you can do stuff like this, where you would have like polar highs cap that are blending together with the rest of the level. Or one I really liked, where I'm basically using only the biomes and blending them together into bands, is this little planet here. As you can see, there's a black and white gradient here, there's a yellow orangey kind of gradient here, and then there's a red here, and then there's, there's some brown, and I've bended them together and blended them using the noise texture so that it looks kind of like a gas giant. And I think it creates a very nice effect, and you can add as many blends as you want and as many biomes as you want. As you can see, this planet has six biomes. So that's going to be it for now. See you all in my next episode. Bye.